Hey, good evening, Anthony Flux. 6.15 p.m., August 17th. Today is a Tuesday. We have a lovely guest today, Ria Mestiza. She's from Australia. Tell me more about yourself. Hi. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks for having me. Um, what can I start off with? I am, I guess, a mindset and performance coach is probably the quickest way of summarizing what I do. But uh, I've been in the industry now for 10 years. And I've uh, loved everything health and fitness for over 20 years. So it's definitely a passion of mine and something that I live and breathe. That's amazing. So like you're telling me when you were born, you were pretty much, you don't, you don't look more than 20. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. No, I think, um, I guess I was a bit of a, a uh, how do I say? Uh, unusual young girl because at, at 12, I had a, a very keen interest in weight training, which as a young female was very strange. And as you may know, um, having a Filipino mom, mm. uh, she's just like, why do you want to do weights? You're going to grow big muscles and that's like a manly thing to do. But um, when I was 12, I was really fascinated by the, the cover of um, fitness magazines and they had these gorgeous, you know, fit, toned, strong looking women. And I was like, wow, like what, what does it take to, to achieve that? Like, how, how can I look like that? And, you know, I was already an athlete. I was very much into sports and dancing and things like that. So weights kind of came hand in hand for me as something to uh, become stronger and a better athlete. But I think in the back of my mind, there was just this seed that was like, I want to look like the cover of that girl in that magazine. Totally. Yeah. And then um, it's funny how you mentioned uh, uh, I tell the girls if when they lift weights, uh, it, it's all very uh, based on uh, your, your, you know, your genetics, your physique, your hormones. Uh, so uh, typically women um, respond to weights, heavy weights, uh, or, you know, the 12 rep weights. Uh, they get tighter usually because that's how the hormones uh, respond to it. You know, men, we, uh, we have higher testosterone, so we bulk up in size. Um, so, um, you know, even there's a lot of men who want to be really big, like Arnold Schwarzenegger. No matter how much they eat or how much they work out, they don't because there's a genetic limiting factor. So same thing with women. So I tell them, yeah, don't be afraid to lift. Um, you're not really going to get that buff. Um, and uh, in fact, it, you know, it's going to tone you more. Um, and mm -hmm. um, okay, so yeah, you saw that magazine. It's amazing because um, when I started bodybuilding, um, I was like, you know, looking into Jay Cutler and all that. So he's uh, he was like, you know, do you have any specific uh, bodybuilders that you uh, looked up to? on those magazines or well yeah absolutely i mean i've got like the old school bodybuilding mags funnily enough i gravitated towards the men's bodybuilding magazines oh, as yeah. a young girl <laughs> <laughs> just because it was it was much more uh intriguing to me rather than like the generic female you know train like a girl do all this sort of plyo stuff and i just didn't gel with that i really wanted to learn how to build and sculpt muscle so i i really loved everything Arnold obviously because how do you not love Arnold when you love bodybuilding right. when at that you know but um Frank Zane as yeah. well like just because he was a smaller physique but he was all about sculpting and creating that body shape yeah. and he was very much underestimated and for my physique you know I I am a smaller framed woman and you know average height but smaller frames and that's one thing that i say to my female clients or to women who say to me oh i don't want to get bulky and it's like i've been training for over 20 years do i look big and bulky to you and they're like no and i'm like exactly you know so it's it's all in the how it's it's the method behind the madness like if you want to get big and bulky then you know obviously there are other ways and uh, enhancements that that <laughs> you know women take to get to that that extreme so yeah but uh, that's amazing, yeah. And you know, but naturally, yeah, the you know, there's that genetic limiting factor. So your body dictates, and uh, yeah, um, yeah. Someone could pay you the cure to COVID, a billion dollars. You know, they can be like, okay, we want you to bulk up to be this buff. Uh, no amount of money can make you that buff if your genetic kind of limits you to that factor. Um, and uh, did you have any specific bodybuilders you looked up to as a kid? You know, like so Arnold Schwarzenegger was your uh, inspiration. Yeah. Yes, I, I didn't really have any female um, bodybuilders because there weren't many. There weren't really any um, at that at that oh, time. Right, right. Yeah. Like we're talking twenty years ago. Like there weren't really any. Like yeah, I keep forgetting. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> now, I mean, obviously, it's a different story. There are so many.、Um, yeah, they they even had to limit the.、Uh, they cut off the bodybuilding division, and now physique is the you know the biggest for women.、Uh, women's、mm-hmm. physique.、Uh, so、uh, that's the highest you can go. And they added a、uh, wellness division. And、uh, you, did you compete?、Uh, what division did you compete in? Or well, are you? I started off. Well, I started off.、Uh, so it was probably back in. Two, yeah, it was 2012 now. Um, I started off in bikini. Okay. So I was a bikini competitor. Then I did fitness, and then I actually did one season of figure. Oh. <laughs> which、okay. you wouldn't you wouldn't think so looking at me, and I think it was more so because there wasn't as many competitors back then as there are now,、mm-hmm. and so I did look quite quote big in comparison to some of the others because I had more muscle on me and you know it's it's really about how you present that muscle on stage is how you look big you know so to speak but、um, definitely went full circle and in my last comp I actually went back to competing in bikini oh wow <laughs> good good yeah and then yeah, yeah. that's exactly how my uh, my coach uh, Wendy Fortino which you know as well yes、um, yeah, yeah it's all about the stage presentation and how you are.、Uh, Presented the shading and the angles and you know the illusion of that you know that V taper, the X shape and the hourglass、yeah. for women's and、um, yeah she goes into details about、uh, all that you know, pay, you know posing uh, uh, plays an important role、um, but even in fitness you know having to develop your routine your creativity that's also a really big、uh, you know presentation wise so uh, sometimes. Uh, I mean, technically, yeah. I've never seen a physique, you know, a superior physique lose with bad presentation. Even though they do say that、uh, presentation is everything, I've never seen like a second or third place with、uh, who's not as you know, who's not as dry or you know, as you know, proportionate lose to someone with a better presentation. So,、uh, but uh, it does、um, help, you know, a lot to kind of present it. So. Presentation is everything when it comes to you know being on stage. Yeah, it really is. Yeah,、totally. I mean my my first competition, I didn't prepare as much for posing, and that was to my detriment. You know, I had like,、uh, without sounding、um, egotistical or whatnot, but like I definitely had the best physique on stage at my first competition, but I、mm. didn't place、oh, because、no. I didn't prepare. Adequately enough, like I thought I was, oh, like I'll be fine. I got this, and you know, like that was my own、uh, <laughs> naivety, and I just, and and then I learnt, and then I placed every comp after I, in that same wow, season.、Congrats. I placed every other comp I did because, but that first one I was like, all right, you know, you have to practice. <laughs> yeah, to gra- yeah, and, and that,、um, yeah. So that's when a presentation comes into play, you know, competition wise.、Um, Getting a, a look from the judges. So if the judges don't even consider you, it's like, yeah, you can have the best physique,、um, but if they don't judge you, <laughs> then there's nothing, you know.、Uh, so having that、uh, yeah. display is very good. And uh, sometimes, um, then again, you know, bodybuilding is also、um, relative. So it's all about judgment, right? So it might not、mm-hmm. be,、um, you know, like、uh, linear. So in in that case,、um, like you know.、Uh, Um, judges from Chicago, they judge bigger guys. But then sometimes it's all about physique and aesthetics. Sometimes judges misjudge. So like you know, if you're a bigger person, like in classic, and you go to men's physique, sometimes they reward you for being bigger, even though men's physique is all about you know aesthetic. So same thing with women. A lot of you know figure girls. I bet you they win bikini competitions because judges like that bigger.、Um, so yeah, you just got you gotta make your judge、uh, fall in love with you in terms of.、Uh, That you know, which you、yeah. know, stage presentation、uh, definitely comes into play.、Um, yeah, it's definitely the most subjective. Like, it's just it is a very subjective sport. Yes, yes,、And、that's the word I was like, looking for. Like that's the thing that you need to have your your mind right about it because you know you could show up with the best physique, could present it really well, but if at the end of the day if they're not if you're not what they're looking for, like they have、mm. a pre- preconceived idea of who they want to place. And I, I always tell my competitors, like, just be prepared. You know, like, yes, you look amazing. Like, do your best, present your best, but just understand that this is the most objective sport you could ever do. And it's you have to learn not to take it personally when you you don't walk away with that trophy. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and、um, yeah, over here, you telling me that.、Uh, tell me more about、uh, this.、Uh, the things you're working on.、Uh, you have three things here that you're working on. 
Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell me more about this reactionary uh, food. Yeah. Well, um, um, like I like I said, I've been in the industry for uh, for ten plus years now, and mm -hmm. in 2018, I was just out having dinner with some friends, and I actually had an anaphylactic reaction to food. Okay. And then for the and, audience out there, what is a uh, anaphylactic mm -hmm. uh, reaction? What is that? It, what does that mean? It, it is a life threatening reaction to where you you basically can't breathe. Oh, and no. so, you know, when you hear about people with peanut allergies and things like that, where they have to carry an EpiPen, um, mm -hmm. you know, to get that shot of adrenaline so they don't die. Oh, no. um, it's when your heart rate goes really fast, you, you, you breathing, like you basically suffocating. <laughs> this is probably the, the best way I can describe it, which is how instantaneously like that happened to me. And so I was just, <clears throat> I was just literally out with my friends and my friend was just like, whoa what happened to your lip because what happens is your lip swells up your tongue swells up like everything swells up and then that's where you basically have no air oh, and so wow. it was the yeah it was the most scariest thing and you know i'm so grateful to actually be here to be able to talk about it because i wasn't prepared for it uh -huh. you know as someone that's been um all about health for about that time eight years uh, I thought I knew how to eat healthy. I wasn't out, out eating junk food. I right. was out just having a a regular meal. You know, it was nothing bad, but that was nearly it for me. And wow. um, it's been a journey. It really has been a journey since then because when I when that happened to me, uh, the reaction to food that I was experiencing wasn't wasn't something that was widely spoken about. Like I went to doctors, I went to specialists, I went to you know allergy specific doctors uh -huh. who just told me that it's all in my head uh, you're not a, you're a healthy person there's nothing wrong with you and I'm like hang on a second I nearly died what do you mean there's nothing wrong with me <laughs> and so, and so yeah it just it just really catapulted me into a career so that's when I, I, I uh, registered to do my my degree in um, naturopathy okay. and I was what like degree, because, uh, what is that it's a study of what what is that well, natural therapies, basically. So everything to do with uh, nutrition, science, um, biochemistry, biology. Like okay. it's it's a bachelor of health health science, basically. And because I, I as I was discovering things, I'm like, hang on a second. These professionals have told me that I'm okay. I'm clearly not. And so I need. I, I felt like I needed to go get that piece of paper to be able to go you know, be the authority to, to tell people what I'd gone through and how to help them. But what I learned along the way is that it actually wasn't taken seriously enough. And so I've just been co collating all of my studies, all of my own experiences, and I'm compiling that into a, you know, something that people can do along with me and that I can help educate them on how they can combat um, these these food intolerances and allergies and how best to navigate it for them because it is a very personalized thing and some people are, are okay with certain foods and, and others are not and you know once upon a time I was someone that understood that there were certain foods that I could eat that gave me somewhat of a reaction but I was like it wasn't it wasn't detrimental yeah. Until it was detrimental. Exactly. <laughs> so, so my my goal now is to kind of help people understand that yeah, we really need to understand our food intolerances, and our body is constantly communicating to us. And you know, whether you're on that side of the fence and you're just understanding that these are just intolerances, but like they need to not be ignored, or you're on the other side of the fence and you're feeling like suffocated, as I you know felt like at that point, it's. Yeah, that's that's really something that I'm passionate about helping people through because it is a very lonely process. It was a very lonely couple of years for me, to, to be honest, because you just don't know what to eat or what is really going to be your your last breath. Okay, and then what did you find out from that? Uh, so, what uh, foods have you changed? And uh... so many, yeah, so, so many. many. It's like, and it this is where you uh... completely flipped everything that I like. 99% of the food that I was eating uh -huh. was was not what I should be eating. And oh, when I wow. say that, it's like healthy foods, right? So, right. you know, you and I have done bodybuilding and 
Uh, back then I was competing a lot more, so I was eating quite regimented. So generally it's mostly the same stuff, you know, same sort of meat, same sort of vegetables, very similar most of the time. And I had to completely flip it and not eat any of those things and eat completely differently. And so at first I took it on as a challenge because I'm like, okay, you know, I can do this. Like it's actually not a bad thing if I eat differently for a little while. And yeah, uh, yeah so it, it is something that I had to evolve and trial over time. Yeah, totally. And and this is where you go and when your co- your courses, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And uh, tell me more about this uh, woman optimizing cycle that you had. Yeah, for sure. So that's yeah. something that I've I've I'm I'm all about how to be your best. Mm-hmm. And when it when when I was <clears throat> when I was working more with well, I work predominantly with women, and especially competitors, right? They mm-hmm. they go through other coaches and they go through these other crazy cycles or they you know people have put them on stuff that they shouldn't be on and there's all sorts of hormonal repercussions that come as a as a result of that but it it actually isn't that much different to some women who go on yo-yo dieting and then they try this diet they try that diet or they've got uh you know some sort of eating disorders like all of these things disrupt us hormonally and women we are already a little bit more hormonal than I, than our counterparts <laughs> and so <laughs> it's it's really been about optimizing like if you're in a in a reproductive age group mm-hmm. there are uh, there is a window of opportunity to really harness and and own and honor what where you are in your monthly cycle so you know obviously we know like when a woman is in her menstrual cycle our energy is low and flat and you know that's when we can we tend to get a little bit frustrated when we're in the gym and we're like oh i'm so weak i can't really you know push as much okay but that's okay because we're actually supposed to like take it easy that week you know we're supposed to maybe focus a little bit more on technique or do a bit more recovery or yoga you know wind it down a little bit to to align with our menstrual cycle that menstrual week now and I'll, then there are other weeks oh sorry go on oh um now now during that week um yeah. would you uh go low carb or, or for your clients or for yourself uh mm-hmm. is this something where you go low carbs to kind of focus on technique uh, because it will affect your lifting if you go low carbs at the same time your mood so is it like a double negative mm-hmm. like you know going low carbs to keto a bad thing during that or do you suggest to go high carbs but if you go high carbs you're not working out as hard or doing as much cardio so it's that's where you kind of gain weight as well so how does one handle that um, yeah or would you recommend I, um well when 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 as soon as we start bleeding we literally it, it's it's draining us it's draining our energy it's draining everything uh-huh. and we we are just simply not as strong and that's just something that we need to give ourselves grace in understanding about yeah in terms of how to eat you should always eat according to the activity and the output of your day right okay, so obviously that, that if you're never gonna, changes okay yeah Got because it. if you're like not going to train that day then you adjust accordingly but also you need to honor your instinctual like guidance of where you want to what you want to eat because perhaps on that week you're probably going to gravitate towards more like soups or warm foods like quite warming foods Mm -hmm. comfort foods and you know some girls obviously like you know craving certain things Mm -hmm. but like if you crave chocolate generally it's because you're actually wanting magnesium because we actually deplete our magnesium a lot uh, okay. quicker and, and a lot more during that week so you'd actually should increase your magnesium um, during the week of the bleed mm-hmm. and yeah it's just eating instinctually like if you feel like soups or you feel like these things eat more of those things we won't, we don't tend to uh, gravitate towards more um, like high carb heavy carb meals because we already feel so heavy mm-hmm. and so those aren't really the the sources of carbs that we will gravitate towards Okay, so it's just yeah. What are some sources of magnesium to suppress that uh, craving? Uh, would you recommend? Well, Both I mean, obviously, for competitors uh, and the layman. My layman, yeah. it's like just people trying to get fit. They're like, oh, uh, I'm trying to get fit. Where do I start? And then for those uh, yeah. seasonal competitors, um, 
which a lot of people, um, yeah, it's like half and half for me. A lot of competitors follow me. Um, mm -hmm. So, but what advice do you have uh, to those women? Well, first and foremost, if you're craving the chocolate, eat it. But don't go for the darker variety because that's where the magnesium sources actually are, not in your milk chocolates. Because what happens if you have your white and milk chocolates, you'll keep eating and eating and eating because you're not actually getting any magnesium out of it. <laughs> so that's the, that's the trap, ladies. Um, but the, the other sources obviously are your, you know, new vegetables, really. Just um, focusing on eating a lot of vegetables, green, green vegetables, whatever's really in season. I, I tend to, to encourage people to eat seasonally and, uh, and cooked. So making sure that it's, it's cooked, it's warm, um, it's easily digestible and yeah the nutrients are in the food but obviously if you do take supplements which you know most of us competitors and, and people in the health space are, are conscientious of like of taking supplements mm -hmm. uh, magnesium is probably something that you should supplement with uh, you know you don't have to be religious about it but definitely in in, in that week now is, is ZMA enough or do you uh, get the individual magnesium uh, yeah, I, I do like I do like getting it. Is a I, I use one that's uh, got zinc, magnesium, and selenium in it. Mm -hmm. um, but I also have you know it, it depends what's in your cabinet, right? But if you at the very least, if you have just a magnesium on its own, go for it. But a zinc and magnesium is generally a good blend to have. Totally, yeah. Um, now let's go back to uh, the, the training method in terms of uh, fitness physique um, and. Um, yeah, um, on my last podcast, uh, you know, I talked about uh, basically the philosophy between powerlifting and uh, aesthetics, which is what you train for as well, bikini. Uh, it's completely different. And um, the transformations that I obtained is I had to let go of powerlifting. So, um, you know, I would lift heavy, you know, 300s in the bench, you know, two, three, four reps, right? Uh, but yeah. I had to let that go for physique. <laughs> Um, and you know, train light. Uh, by light, you know, twelve reps and, and mm -hmm. above, and uh, having a low carb diet. Um, but um, any form of powerlifting, uh, I had to really let go uh, to get the transformation. So, um, especially if you're dieting down, cutting to four percent body fat. Uh, and once you know, I was guided by you know Wendy Fortino. So she's like a nine-time Olympian, eight-time Olympian. Uh, so yeah, I'm she's like. Amazing. I can't refute that, so I'm like I just trusted her. Uh, the process works; it, it did work. Uh, yeah. The only thing that I don't like is that oh wow, I'm not lifting as hard. But the goal is not to be a power lifter. The goal is to look good on stage. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, she's like you know, eat low sodium. You know, kind of harness the power of the earth in terms of you know, striking your poses. So yeah, her philosophy in and out. You know, the nutrition, her guidance, and all that uh, with her husband uh, is like really on point. Um, now, um, during that time, um, I talked about on my last podcast, uh, you know, the freedom of choice, just feeling motivated to work out. Um, so uh, when I was in the military, I kind of gained 50 pounds because you were told when to work out, what to eat, or not what to eat, but like you were limited on all that. Uh, but then mm -hmm. once I had uh, complete control in the gym schedule, like, you know, if I want to work out in the morning, I do. So I, I don't really bind myself to a workout. I just say, okay, I'm going to work out in the morning. 5 a.m. Uh, but then if I want to work out at night, I also have that freedom of choice. So I, I don't let my mm -hmm. schedule kind of control me in that sense, but I kind of dictate, you know. But, you know, if I make a commitment, I do follow through with it. Uh, unless, you know, it over supersedes with uh, what pays you, which is, you know, at this point in the military. Yeah. <laughs> so kind of like, yeah, so our schedule is kind of random. But um, yeah, I used to work out in the morning, but I figured my body responds well at night. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, once I kind of made those adjustments, I'm like, okay, wow, you know, I could work out at 5 a.m. or 7 p.m. Uh, I can eat unhealthy or healthy. You know, I could eat ice cream. I could eat uh, my six meals, my two or my tilapia and all that. Um, just having those options, that uh, self-determinism, I was able to kind of make a transformation. And the difference is 50 pounds. Uh, so um, even without those options, you know, uh, we were given, you know, time to work out every day, like an hour and a half. Uh, we were given, uh, you know, we had to eat at these times in the cafeteria. 
um, mm-hmm. you know, the same environment, but uh, when you're kind of limited on what you can do and when to work out, that's when I stopped trying. So I'm like, I didn't even bother lifting. I didn't even bother eating properly. And, you know, I gained, you know, after winning a physique competition, I'm like, wow, I just blurted it out because, uh, and th- that ties in as well with COVID. So a lot of uh, girls out there don't have a gym or don't want to go out. Like my best friend, she's uh, into fitness. Uh, she is not going to the gym, you know, because she values her um, health more. Even though she's mm-hmm. a fitness, um, you know, she's really into fitness and stuff. So she just does, you know, home workouts and stuff. Um, yep. And yeah, a lot of people are kind of limited in those choices. So, uh, you know, it, you know, the conclusion that I had, you know, fitness is really a mind game. So because you have the resources, you know, like I said, you know, I'm mm-hmm. given... Um, You can't really beat yourself up and be like, yeah, I should be working out at home. I should be eating. Um, But how does one uh, develop a, uh, well, you know, how did you develop your fitness uh, intuition in terms of uh, what to do and when to do it? Um, Because, you know, um, yeah, because, you know, I was stuck for months at a higher weight, uh, eating unhealthy. Uh, But Mm -hmm. when the time come, I'm like, oh, wow, my schedule is more free. I'm able to, even though I'm still here. Uh, I'm able to make those choices. Uh, I'm streamlined, you know, I'm losing two pounds a week. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, like, so, yeah, so that, that that's uh, that's multiple questions. But um, the first question is, um, you know, how do you transform when mm-hmm. you don't have control of the gym or the fitness? And two, how do you develop that intuition of uh, when to work out, when to splurge and how to trust your body? Because sometimes, uh, you know you can't really trust your uh that's why you hire a coach especially if you're eating low carbs you're like um i can't make the proper decision eating keto zero carbs that's why i have wendy fortino she tells me when to go low high uh the intensity of my cardio the duration because if i wanted to do what i want to do um it's harder to make those decisions but uh yeah so tell me more about your philosophy towards that uh yeah for sure so, well, my philosophy is to that it's a lifestyle, that oh, to be healthy, fit, strong, sure. it's it's a holistic, it's uh, it's it's health, it's the whole everything. It's your entire life. And so, but having said that, you know, because I work with a lot of professional women, you know, I'm, I mean, everybody's busy nowadays, and so it's about finding the and I don't want to say balance, but it's about finding the right um, amount of volume in the week and so that's where a schedule and that's where a programming comes into play because you have to have not not just the right you know nutrition you really got to have that down pack to be able to get the aesthetic goal achieved Mm -hmm. but also you need to have the correct and adequate programming in place to achieve your goal based on the amount of output that you're able to So when someone says to me, you know, they're a a working mum, and so they're not able to train every day of the week, but every day there is a source of exercise. And so it becomes a lifestyle, you know, we're made to move. And so there, it has to be some form of movement, even if it's just a walk, you know, it could be, it could be some stretching, it could be some yoga, it could be anything, could be some core work, but that's, but scheduling out the week so they know that what if they, they stick to the plan, the, the goal will be achieved. Uh, how From where I started, you know, it's uh, I didn't have the foolproof plan because I didn't hire a coach at that stage. I just thought that I was in like learning. And so like when I learned something, I implemented and I and that's how I trial and error. Um, in nowadays, it's again, it's, it's a similar mentality that I what I preach is what I practice. And so I have a plan in place for uh, myself that you know how I eat uh, and how I train and as long as I stick to that uh, you know I continue to get results because my big thing is if you're not progressing you're regressing and so to continue that progress it's it's a commitment it's a it's a discipline and it becomes a muscle and in all honesty it wasn't I like until it I becomes a muscle yeah like the discipline absolutely muscle, yeah. but go totally. ahead sorry for and, and, it, and it does because if you if you continue to um, to train and because uh, I don't believe in like off, you know I mean there are different different modalities and, and different uh, purposes to your training based on what your goal is so I can't say um, 
Like if I'm competing, then there's a different way that I'm training to get that different goal. And you know this. But if you're training for strength, you know, like you have to put your body through all of the paces. So it's continually challenged. And then so you're continually getting results. So, yeah, it's just something that I've been, I can proudly say that I've been consistent with and I haven't stopped training. You know, even through lockdowns, I, you know, I, I didn't have a fully equipped gym at home at that at the beginning of it, but I had you know, some weights, I had some things like that. And when you have the know-how uh, of how to move and, and uh, your body, you can still do things at home adequately. But then over time, obviously, I you know built a home gym and things like that, so that I could still train at the at the intensity that I that I like, and so you know uh, without a gym. But it really just just depends on your goal, you know. And if it's to build muscle, because I've always been a skinny girl, or should I say, a skinny fat girl, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and then I had to learn how to sculpt. You know, I had to learn how to create the physique. You know, whereas some women come to me and they're like, oh. I hate I hate my big shoulders or I hate this and I was like, you have been blessed with beautiful shoulders. I had none. I, these I had to build, you know, <laughs> like I had the tiny little frame. But then as you put muscle on it, like structurally, your yeah. body learns to support that muscle that you put on it. And it's been a beautiful process of learning how to sculpt the body to what you desire it to look like. Hence, Fitseek is my is my my business, my brand. But it's yeah, it's about creating the physique that you want. Yeah, and I- it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I like the branding, you know, fit seek, and uh, tell me more about. Uh, so you're a mindset uh, transformation coach, or, or what was the exact uh, title? Mindset. I, honestly, Anthony, I've I've always found it really difficult to summarize what mm-hmm. I do in in like mindset the elevator game. pitch sentence. Um, be, only because there is so much that I do. So my my business is called Fatigue Wellness and Performance. Okay. And it's because I holistically, you know, look at all of the the pillars of life, all of the pillars that are important to us as individuals. You know, right. it's not just nutrition, it's fitness, it's mindset, it's sleep, it's it's all of the above. Okay. And it's it's you know, harnessing control over all of those things that get you the, the result that we want. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and and that's uh, how everything is kind of gravitated towards uh, nowadays. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, like um, I go to um, when it was op- well now it's open, but Equinox. You know, it's not fitness; it's life. And uh, a lot of uh, newer gyms kind of go into that you know holistic approach. And uh, they did make a connection. You know, uh, you know between um, the the um, the holistic um, you know the metaphysics in terms of uh, your body and you know the mm-hmm. spirit in terms of uh, transformation so uh, you know you know yoga is typically the common thing but uh, you know um, it's it's uh, nowadays yeah it's a little bit deeper than just the physical you know you're no longer like that meathead yes. it's like yeah there's all <laughs> these <laughs> yo- you know that's kind of like that's yeah. almost required um, I wouldn't say I mean I wouldn't say it's dependent on it, but um, it plays a very important role because meaning and purpose, um, like you said, you know, um, you, you know, it depends on your goal. It has to align, yeah. and then uh, that's kind of like how your body uh, transforms. And uh, but how does one develop, um, you know, that mindset of uh, wanting it? Because you know, a lot of you know, the, the most common it, it happened to me too. I mm-hmm. want to be fit. Uh, this is when you know I was uh, a little bit more of a raid, but. Uh, but then I don't really, my actions don't align. You know, it, it took the point where uh, I'm like, oh man, I'm so off my uh, competition weight, my competition division. Uh, I really had to force myself. And yeah, it took me six weeks to uh, get into a proper diet without eating, uh, you know, because every time you eat ice cream, it sets you back three days. So, you know, I'd <laughs> eat healthy for like two days. And then for the next yeah. week or two, I would eat ice cream, burgers, bacon, bagels. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really had to train my uh, conscience, my consciousness, the, you know, the spirit in terms of like, okay, I'm in dominion, not my body. And then I had to like, you know, like you're teaching a dog, you're like, okay, sit, boy, like, you know, eat healthy. And then, uh, once I got into the routine, you know, like um, six weeks is what took me to kind of stop eating cheat meals. And uh, I haven't eaten a cheat meal in like, yeah, quite a few weeks, if not a month. And then, uh, uh, that's how I transform because you know you can't really get out of nutrition uh, it plays an important role but uh, what are your steps to um, especially when dealing with your clients you know to the girls out there to the guys out there uh, 
a lot you know a lot of the times i hear oh my gosh i want to be fit i see i see them in the gym you know twice three times a day seven days a week uh, but then you know splurging out with ice cream sushi uh yeah so um they want it but then they don't want it and uh you know i looked at it before from a com- competitor standpoint i'm like just eat healthy but then i i went to mm-hmm. their, their level i'm like oh wow i'm really addicted to this you know carbs it's like a drug you know carbs are like the biggest addicting yeah. the most addicted drug out there the sugars and all that uh, but once i yes. cut that off then suddenly okay wow now i experience your temptations uh, before i did not but now i do i'm like i could see now um mm-hmm. And then, yeah, for me, the biggest thing is just not giving up. But for you, what advice, how does one uh, develop that mindset to kind of, you know, wanting that transformation? Uh, I mean, they could want it. They could hire a coach and then uh, they would yes. blame the coach. Hey, I'm not transforming. Well, what did you eat? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah, no, there's a lot of there's a lot of different things <laughs> that you've mentioned there. And I guess from from a competitive perspective yeah. or, or any extreme, if you go to an, any extreme, there's always usually an extreme uh, result that happens later, right? So like you said, like you go through deprivation of things that you might enjoy eating and then when you're able to, you're not in comp mode anymore and then that's when people tend to binge. And it, it, even on an everyday level, women especially, I can speak, I can vouch for, we've, we've all had an eating disorder of some sort <laughs> and I don't and actually I don't think that it's even limited to gender anymore because you know even as you just said um, you know you get addicted to sugary foods and carbs and we all do so let's just say that so everyone at some point has experienced the eating disorder at some stage because you think oh I need to follow this diet or oh no I haven't eaten carbs for like two months now and then all I want to eat is carbs right. so it's we're, we're, we're rule breakers because if you if you're confined to rules you're you generally break them with you know that's just the uh, human nature but um, yeah like I said in in terms of um, how I, I help people get their their mind right is mm-hmm. figuring out their true why and why because they come to me with a goal mm-hmm. you know Ria I want to uh, you know build some muscle and you know tone up and I'm like, great. Why do you want to do that? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, because, you know, I, I really wanted to build some muscle and I thought it'd be really cool. And I just want to get like strong. Mm-hmm. I'm like, OK, but why do you want to get strong? Like, what benefit is that to you? Because if you if you have to have a deeper why as to why you're going to get up and go to the gym or why you're not going to eat you know, that donut or whatever else. <laughs> like, because it, when, you, when you're when you honed in on your deeper why, that's your motivation. And that's that's the, the greatest hack that I can share with you because if, if like when you, when you know you've got a show and it's on the 30th of November mm-hmm. and then, okay, you're like, all right. And so every time you're tempted to eat the donut, you're going to go, well, no, I can't because that's just stupid like I have this show on the, the 30th of November like I have to you know. yeah and that's and that stops you but if you don't have a goal you have no you have no purpose you have no reason to to remain on your path because even though you have a goal and you think okay it's going to be like you said at the start it's not a linear process it's you're going to go this way you're going to go that way and that's okay but if you keep your eye on the prize and if you have a, a direct goal, it doesn't have to be a competition. It can just be, it could be a wedding. It could be or I, my birthday. I just want to look better by my birthday. Or I want to achieve a certain lift. I want to be able to deadlift, you know, X amount of weight. So then you know you need to keep putting in the reps. You need to keep putting in the training to achieve said goal. So, yeah, that's what I, I think is probably the most important thing. Yeah, totally, yeah. And then uh, I like how... Um... Yeah, especially for me, I like, uh, you know, whenever uh, you commit to the action, you know, Grant Cardone says, commit now, figure out the rest later. So, you know, I do cardio in the morning, first thing. Um, and if not, I just, you know, work out. I eat, a, I, I, uh, I eat healthy, I work out. Um, and typically my cravings would be at night. So then I, I reevaluate my day. I'm like, you know, I just ran freaking 45 minutes of cardio. Do I really want to eat this, you know, bacon avocado burger you know or uh, <laughs> ice cream i'm like that will kind of negate my the purpose of cardio so uh but it, it yeah. becomes you know um routine you know you just program yourself to uh you know enter that routine or get a you know program from your coach um and then 
everything else kind of, you know, if it negates it, then you start questioning, well, I just put in this effort. I don't want to, you know, because, yeah, that, that cheat meal, you know, that's going to set you back two or three days. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is just from one meal. But um, yeah, but trying not to beat yourself up about it either, because, you know, mm -hmm. like it's like I said about eating disorders, you know, one as soon as you sort of break your quote diet, like someone will be like ah oh, well screw it i've already messed up you know so then everything goes into a massive binge after that and you know, yeah. it's gone two three days of eating so it's it's really an emotional uh connection to that you know e emotion comes from energy and motion and so Ooh. once someone feels like they've broken that they tend to just let all of their inhibitions out the window and all control and discipline is gone <laughs> yeah exactly that's exactly what i'm going or what i went through it's uh you know kind of like well what's the point or, or yeah you kind of go through that you know that but uh yeah what i found is that um temper you know it's uh what got me out of that is definitely like um in terms of uh temporary so like you know i only feel good for the next 15 20 minutes that i consume this meal afterwards mm -hmm. th that sugar high is gone um but you know your physique you know you're, before your body recomps it takes two weeks so uh it's kind of more longer lasting um and uh, even though it doesn't feel good to eat healthy uh or it doesn't taste as good uh that tasting could you know could you know i would reserve that you know like looking in the mirror people complimenting you uh, it becomes an exchange of feeling good, but in a different time. So, um, but yeah, that's, you know, there's many little mini yeah. hacks, but uh, yeah, definitely having, yeah. That, you know, that deeper why is definitely the most important. Um, yeah. But yeah, thank you so much for joining me here. Uh, before we uh, go, uh, you got voted mm -hmm. the number one coach or one of the most, yeah, tell me more about that award that you got from Australia. Yeah, so I think it was in March or no April this, uh, year. this year. I got voted the yeah the number one health and wellness coach in Australia for 2021. So wow, um, yeah, that was a massive massive honor for me. And you know, like I said before, I've I found it difficult to niche. And so every every coach I've ever had already one has just said like really you need to niche down like you do bodybuilding so just be a bodybuilding coach and I'm like well no I don't just do bodybuilding I do you know I, I fix the the I fix women who have you know hormone dysfunction and things like that and I also do remedial therapy so I'm fixing bodies hands-on wow. and I also do rehab and then I also do this and I do mindset and I and like so how do I niche and how do I call myself XYZ and so it was it was just a beautiful uh cherry on top of uh, releasing my podcast earlier this year and you know it was literally a month or so later and i i got uh, someone reached out to me and said hey we just want to interview you for this um top 10 uh opportunity and i said yeah for sure and so mm -hmm. uh, i said to them at the end when they said ria like wow you are honestly top contender here and i, I said well thank you um, and the reason that I stood out was because I did so much. You know, it's not because I am just a bodybuilding coach or I just do this or I just do that. It's because I do, I am a holistic coach at, in, by nature and I do everything that that's what made me stand out. Like I literally, my, my friend called me up the next day. She's like, you trumped a doctor? And I was like, yeah, because the doctor only focuses on nutrition. I said, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I do all of the things. So yeah, it was a great honor for me, and I'm, oh I'm very gosh. proud of that. Congratulations! I'm proud of you. <laughs> That's amazing. You know, one for the team Thank in you. terms of uh, bodybuilding and stuff. Um, and how does one, um, you know, tell you know, tell the audience out there, how does one reach your podcast, um, your mm -hmm. website, your social media, and all that? Yeah, for sure. Well, there's only one Ria Mestiza in the world, and uh, you can find me anywhere at Ria Mestiza. Um, so, Coach Ria, Ria Mestiza on, okay, yeah, Ria so, Mestiza, okay. uh, on Instagram, and I've got uh, my podcast, which is Summon Your Superhuman. So if you want to learn more and dive deeper into specific topics uh, that I speak about uh, individually and also with guests, so there's some real inspirational and uh, informative information on my podcast that you can chime into if you're interested. Totally. And it's under uh, riamestiza.com as well for the super um, or summon your... No, uh, that's uh, summon your superhuman podcast. So it's, uh, there's, yeah. Okay. 
If you look up Summon Your Superhuman, you'll find it. All right, Summon Your Superhuman Podcast. And uh, Ria Mestiza, yeah. Mestiza is spelled M-E-S-T-I-Z-A. Yeah, correct. Dot com. Yeah. Follow her, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. I'm honored, you know, you. to be interviewing you uh, with this podcast and stuff. Uh, do you have any other last words or uh, anything you want to give to the audience out there? Well, I just want to say that every decision is is your choice. Like you talked about freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. It's you you can choose to be weak or you can choose to be strong and and you can refer to that in any which way you you'd like mind body soul mm -hmm. but at the end of the day indecision is decision as well so just hone in into your why into all of the areas of your life and just every day work towards being your best self totally all right thank you so much for joining us thank you so much vlogs hope you guys have a thank wonderful you mindset uh for the whole week so again i'm so grateful to have you here my pleasure okay